Right, last video of the day then, before we're going to play with my kids. Make something of the day anyway. Um, just want to talk about, so as you can say, tomorrow I'm going to be wiring, first fixing. I've done so much uh, prep, and as you can see, I've got, got a couple of switches in there now. I've got um, sockets down there, socket there. And there's two sockets behind that plaster board over there. And one, where is he? There, just there. Um, in this room. And uh, yeah, taping it, it does take a long time, but it is what it is. I'm not going to sweat it too much. Um, so, tomorrow I'm going to do some wiring. Thank God. I'm going to talk through that as well. Again, it won't be fast, guys, because I'm trying to tell everybody how to do it. So, you know, you get into a rhythm where you're trying to tell people how to do things. Uh, and when you're, when you're actually doing it, you get into a rhythm and then, you know, it, you flow and you do it from muscle memory, not even thinking about it. So, But I'm going to talk you through what I personally do, because um, obviously this is for the apprentices. So I'm thinking about wiring up the first floor socket, consumer units underneath this, this floor here, um, downstairs. So effectively I'm going to come out uh, underneath the floor here, this is going to be my first socket and then I'm going to, because the joists go this way, I'm going to clip up to that socket on the right hand side of the bed, over to this socket on the left hand side of the bed, over to this socket and then I'm going to come through to this socket here and then from that socket there I've got one in this hallway so I need to move this rubbish out of the way, there's going to be one in the hallway, from there I've got one Socket here. I don't know if you can see oh, it's behind us. So I've got one socket there. I've got another socket up here. And then I'm going to come down, pick up the actual back. No, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go to that one. I'm then going to go up to this one. And then I'm going to come along this wall here. So one there, one there, and then across, obviously across the floor. Because that's the way the joists go as well. And I'm going to go bang, bang, bang. So that will be my last socket over there. And the, the reason for planning your roots out, guys, as well, is obviously you want to work with the joists. You don't want to be drilling in unnecessary holes because that takes time. You want to find the shortest route through. Because, again, that does two things. It, it keeps the, the uh, you can make money out of the job, obviously, if you keep the cost down and doing it fast. But it also keeps the cable runs down as well. So, um, you don't want to get to the end of the, the, you know, running all the cables, do an R1, R2 test and realise that, you know, that combined with your ZE, your ZS is too big um, for your disconnection device. So keep the runs small and then we get the, um, the lowest resistance and the highest fault current and the fastest trip time. So um, I always plan my routes out for the shortest, um, even if it does end up taking me longer. Again, with the lighting as well, because there's so much Celotex in the ceiling, again, I'm going to come from the consumer unit and I'm going to feed the switches. So I've got a switch here, and the reason I'm feeding the switches is because I don't want to go anywhere near the ceiling, anywhere near the roof. What's the point in running all that extra cabling to run up to there, trying to stay away from Celotex, trying to stay away from in insulation, um, only to come back down again? So I'm going to feed the first floor, I'm going to um, feed this switch that then comes to it's going to be a switch here which would be back to back with the bathroom it's back, will it be back to back to the bathroom no it won't because the bathroom is going to be within 600 so this will be the bathroom switch and the hallway switch uh, and then from here it then comes to this bedroom bedroom switch and then from here it's going to run upstairs to another switch that's in there, sort of a, I'll probably show you guys this loads of times, but there's like a little mezzanine floor that I've built then. So, so instead of having a loft space, I've got a mezzanine floor um, for my boy's drum kit to go up there. Um, and then right at the very top, I don't know, it's probably too hard to see there, but I'm gonna have an LED light at the top uh, strip, give them plenty of light. And there's not much head space up there, so it keeps the, the, the you know, um, profile down. Uh, in the so in this bedroom, I've got a nice piece of oak that I'm gonna stick up in where that cable is. Uh, where is it? 
up here. Uh, oh, it's hard to position this thing. Oh, there you go. You can see it now. So there's a table up there. I'm I've got a piece of oak that I'm going to put in as a sort of feature uh, for the. Cause again, I don't like pendants on sloped ceiling, so I thought I'll put a bit of timber across there. Um, and I managed to get a nice piece of oak for that. Uh, 150 by 100, so it, 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 and, I, and then because of the, you can see the height of the ceiling, so we're gonna have a nice chandelier in there, I think. Um, hallway, just a pendant in the hallway. Bathroom, I'm gonna have three spots like three spotlights, so you know, sort of one, two, three in an L shape, or maybe even just one, two, three in a row, actually, because there isn't. The thing with, with spotlights is that. I'll just draw this up on the board here. On the board, thank God for that. Uh, let's see if I can draw this out. So, let's say this is a room. If you put your down lights too close to the middle, it can make the ceiling look smaller. If you put your down lights to the edges, it makes the ceiling look bigger, stretches it out. Um, if you've got a room which is longer and you try and put down lights in, they can look quite close together. Um, whereas if, it, if they're the same sort of space, if you just had three in a row, because of the width of the room, um, you'll gain exactly the same amount of light, less down lights, and it looks better in my opinion. I mean, sometimes if the room's that small, you don't even have to have the one in the middle, but you know, it is, what it is. I mean, I've been to people's houses before, and, and one person he, he didn't want anything level. He didn't want any sockets level. Didn't want any windows put in level. He didn't want the, the lights to be in the right places. He just wanted it all random. Um, so you know, everyone's got their their own take on things. Um, two of these lights are going to be um, end lights. I quite like the end light LED fittings. You know, the complete fitting. This is one here. So I quite like these with the clip flow plug and play. Again, for testing, you know, at the end of the job, or if you come down to do an EICR afterwards, you can disconnect the whole thing uh, and, and test. Again, you know, it's ideal for me. I like it. Um, the light that's going to be over the, f the bath uh, is actually going to be a uh, fan. So I've got a bezel. Where is the bezel? Ah. So this was in the bathroom originally. So you put a down light in the centre of that, and that's your that's your fan as well, um, and it cuts down on ceiling acne. And I don't see the point in having an extra light and an extra fan. You might as well have the fan and the light combined, and then that way, you know, I can put a, a lamp in there that's the same as the other down lights. And if you've got the fan above the um, bath, you can do two things. A obviously as you're showering. Common misconception with fans, guys, as I'm just going to say this as well. Common misconception with fans is they don't suck the moist air out of a room. What they actually do is they lower the temperature of the room as quickly as possible so that the water can evaporate. And you also get that convection process going as well, so air movement. Um, however, having said that, if you put a nice big fan right above the, the, the bath itself, but the actual shower itself, as that moist air is rising, the fan will naturally take it out. So you know, if the bath's the bath's going on this side, um, so if I have the, sh the fan above the bath, uh, I'm going to get the best, um, you know, extraction out of it. Whereas if I have it on this side of the room, there's no way that it's going to be able to suck any moist air over that distance. You know, it's about two and a half meters wide this room, so it's not. It's just not going to do it. So again, if I have the fan with a light in it, straight above there, I'm going to have a um, uh, inline fan in, in the loft, um, solar palau one, nice and quiet, uh, that way as well, that, you know, if someone uses the toilet at night, it can go off, uh, sorry, it, if it does go off, it won't be, um, it won't be quiet, obviously, I will have an isolating switch outside of the room as well, things like my isolating switch is up quite high, uh, the good thing is with the solar palau ones as well, is they don't require that three amp fuse, um, that some fans need. I like that. I don't see the need of having it if the manufacturer's instructions don't require it. So, you know, again, horses for courses. Some people like it. Um, because I'm going to have that up on the mezzanine area, 
as well and the the fan is going to be separate from the actual bezel the fan will be more quiet as well and i think the extraction rates quite a lot on those i'm trying to remember what it is it's something like 90 meters cubed an hour or something something like that i'm making figures up but it's something like that so the fact that it's an inline fan you get a better extraction rate as well quieter um because obviously you know when you t when you look at fans and they're only this deep there's only so much fan you can fit in that so much motor you can fit in that so if i can wherever possible i always have an inline fan separate um what another possibility i could do as well is i could have a switch here so that the light above the shower which has got the fan built in is separate and then that way you know the other lights come on on one switch the fan doesn't come on and then if you want to have a shower you put the shower light on the fan comes on as well with that and then you know that way people aren't switching on at night when they use the toilet i did think about doing that um the thing is i've got already got three switches coming out here i think i've got bathroom fan no, sorry bathroom lights and fan i've got this floor and i've got downstairs two-way so i didn't want a four gain switch here i think that looks too busy i just want a, a single gain switch um but also we're going to have a um we're going to have a mirror cabinet there so at night rather than switching the lights on there will be a mirror cabinet the other benefit as well to um putting the fan and the light above the fan on a separate switch is that you can use a dimmer for the remaining lights so just something to think about there guys uh, in this one we're just going to have a dimmer and a chandelier and that's it got wall lights either side of the bed uh, yeah you guys can just about see that um, so yeah I mean that's it smoke alarm in the hallways um, debating whether to put a smoke alarm on that sort of mezzanine floor up there I think I will purely because you know i don't want to get to the end of the job and then the building inspector comes along uh, the building control officer comes along and says oh by the way that's that's now a separate floor you should have had smoke alarm up there and as well you know from a fire point of view if there was a fire out here that's the highest point so that's where it's going to all collect first before the alarm goes off you know so yeah, it's definitely worth having one up there i think right that's pretty much it I think so yeah that's what I'll be doing tomorrow again I don't know how far I'll get because I'm going to set the camcorder up I'm going to film myself drilling the holes using the level to get those straight angle drill to make sure the holes are level um, talking through the clip spacing and ha what I use as a guide to finding that space and getting all the cables clips nicely lined up because that's the way I like it um, it's not for everyone uh, and I get that um, yeah uh, see you later. Take care. Bye.